A cordial greeting to everyone. May God bless each and every one of you greatly. It's a great joy to gather together to be before our God, to give Him the honor and the glory that He deserves, that only He deserves. It's not just any other day. This is an amazing opportunity that the God of heaven has allowed us to have. That's why all of you in the different locations of the church and the different churches throughout the world, whether you might be connecting even on your phone or on a computer, wherever you might find yourself, a warm welcome to you all. And may you all be blessed by our God because today, brothers and sisters, we congregate as one single person with one objective, which is to praise and exalt the name of our God. We share with you that we are here in the Church of Western Florida, in the south of Florida, in the United States. And we want to give you a warm greeting through an applause because we know that our God is with each and every one of us. Glory to our King. Let us now pray to our Creator. Let us ask the God of Heaven to accompany us and bless us in this moment. Bless this service and fill us with His presence. Let us say to Him, Heavenly Father, great glorious Lord, You are holy, You are perfect, You are wonderful. You are the God of Heaven and Earth. You are our fortress, You are our strength, You are our sustenance. There's no good aside from You, my Lord. That's why in You, we have all our strength. We have come before your presence, O Lord, to give you the glory, to give you the recognition, the praise, the exaltation that only you deserve for all your great and mighty works, for your marvels, O Lord. And we want to proclaim your word. We want to testify of your greatness. Speak of your greatness and before all things to find your peace, to find your blessing, to find your kindness. Help us, bless us, accompany us, allow us to have the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge to be able to retain and keep your words of this wonderful path that leads us to salvation and may be your powerful hand in our lives directing us because you are our north, you are our light, you are our compass. That's why, O oh Lord, in your mercy, we want to ask for you to bless each and every one of our brothers and sisters around the world for your powerful hand to be extended over each and every one of them, for you to bless your church throughout all the nations, and for you to bless the preaching of your great and marvelous gospel. Stay here with us in this gathering and be manifest yourself in this moment. We ask you this in the glorious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the honor and glory be forever for our God. Let us open our Bibles, brothers and sisters. We're going to read in the gospel according to Matthew in chapter number 7. The Gospel according to Matthew, chapter number 7. We're going to be reading from verse number 7, and we're going to read a few words, marvelous words, a beautiful passage that speaks regarding prayer, the importance of praying to our God, how wonderful it is to have a living God that hears us and that He always fulfills His promises. It reads in the Scriptures in Matthew, chapter number 7, verse number 7. Let us read all together. The Bible states, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? Glory to our God, brothers and sisters. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. And look what it states in verse number 13 and 14, brothers and sisters, so that we can always think of the blessing and kindness that God has given us. It reads, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it, and we have found it, Blessed is the name of our God. You may take a seat, brothers and sisters. Let us now sing to our God of glory, that God of mercy, brothers and sisters, who's allowed us to know him truly 
a living God, a God of power, not a God who is a legend or a myth or just a theory, as many might think, but rather a God that exists, a God that speaks. And he, if you are here with us for the first time, what a great joy it is for you to come to our congregation, the Church of God Ministry of Jesus Christ International, a place where God speaks, as the Bible states, through dreams, visions, and especially through the spiritual gift of prophecy. Today, you will be able to have that great and wonderful experience, that great blessing of having a direct experience with God in the same way that God allowed us to have in a point in our life and to find this wonderful place. As we just read, very few find this path. Glory to our God. Let us sing to our God, hymn number 24, titled, There is Power in the Blood, hymn number 24. May all praise, exaltation, and glory always be given to our God. It's wonderful what this hymn states. There is power in the blood of the Lamb, of our Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Power to give us eternal life. Power to give us an opportunity to know Him. Just a few days ago, we heard the testimony of one of the churches that is found in the neighborhood of Santander in the city of Bogota in Colombia. In the church in Santander, there are three services, one in the morning, one at 5 p.m., and one at 7 p.m. The brothers and sisters were changing the service between 5 to 7 p.m., and a person said to them, a, someone invited me to this church, and this person was very hurt, very worried. The pastors greet him, greet them and invite them to receive prophecy and present the church to them. In that moment, the Lord speaks to them and says, I have been the one that has protected your life because you wanted to take your life, but I brought you to this place. The person was very impacted, very shocked, and they shared with the pastors what happened just a few hours earlier. He decided to take his own life. He decided to jump off a bridge. A woman came up to him at that time and asked him, what, what are you doing? And he said to her, I don't want to live anymore. And she said, no, why don't you seek God instead? And gave him the directions, the address of the church to go to, go to church. 
And he said to himself, the, the invitation was so strange, but it touched me, so I wanted to go. And as he was sharing the entire story, the brother who was in charge at that time said, hold on, wait a moment. And he takes his phone and shows him the picture of our sister, Maria Luisa, and asks him, was it perhaps this person? And the person was shocked and said, yes, she was the one who invited me. And they were all surprised and said, well, you just had an experience with God. God invited you. That was a vision that God allowed you to have and brought you to this place because our sister, Mary Luisa, in that moment was in the United States, but the Lord used her form, her appearance to bring one, yet another person to this wonderful path and present them to a path of salvation. Glory to our God. Blessed is the name of our Lord, his mercy for his kindness, for his love, because each one of us has also received that invitation through his wonderful love so that we may be saved. Let us sing yet another beautiful hymn that has to do with that wonder of our God and his mercy. Hymn 181, Wonderful Love. Wonderful love that saved 
May the honor, glory, and praise always be given to our God. How wonderful it is to share these miracles of our God with the whole world. That's why we invite everyone to visit our official website, www.idmji.org forward slash en. There you will find information regarding our church. The addresses, considering that we are in over 60 countries and have over 1,000 churches around the world, so many testimonies of the marvels of our God, teachings, sermons, reflections. We have so much material there within our reach. It's not just for us to learn, but also for us to proclaim to the entire world regarding our God and His existence. That's why we also invite you to join our YouTube channels and subscribe to our official channels. So that that way we can all participate, share, and give importance to the material of the church online. Many people have come to the church as they search online and they search of God. They have come to our church through the sermons of our YouTube channel and also through the YouTube, the official YouTube channel of our sister Maria Luisa, Maria Luisa Piriquive Oficial with one F. That's why, brothers and sisters, let us not be tired. Let us continue spreading the word and sharing with everyone that our God exists, that he lives, and that he is real. Glory to our God. We would like to invite you to stand in this moment and let us pray to our Lord. Let us give him thanks. How many miracles has the Lord done for us? So many. We cannot count them all. They are innumerable. All the works that the Lord has done in our life. In this instance, let us give him thanks for his mercy and kindness. Let us give him thanks. And also, let us pray to him regarding the tithes and the offerings and to continue to extend his powerful hand throughout his church. Let us pray to him and say, Heavenly Father, glorious King, you are holy and merciful. You are the God of heaven. You are the God of earth. You are the marvelous and most powerful Lord. You, Lord, deserve all praise and exaltation for your great works, for your great marvels. That's what we just sang about. For that great love, that wonderful love, that mercy that you have had toward us. You have given us this opportunity of life, this opportunity to know your path, this opportunity to know your gospel, a true gospel where you live, a gospel where you manifest yourself as the Bible teaches us because it is you who fulfills. It is you who speaks to us. It is you who makes those marvelous promises through the gift of prophecy. And you give us you joy. You fill us with peace and happiness. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because you have given us the path for us to follow so that we can one day attain salvation. We thank you for your doctrine, for your teachings, O Lord, for the revelation of your word through your works for your great and mighty wonders. Because you provide for each of our needs. You are the one who gives us that triumph. You are the one who blesses us throughout our entire spiritual life. You give us peace. You give us joy. You give us motivation. You help us to press on. How wonderful it is to know that we can count on you, O Lord, in our life. How wonderful it is to know that we are not alone, but that you are by our side. We also want to, O Lord, before the, in this moment, present to you this wonderful act of giving our tithes and offerings. We ask for you to be pleased by them and for it to be with your power to bless the cheerful giver because we do everything with our heart. It's within our conscience. We want to, to give to you what you have given to us first, what belongs to you, not because we have to, not because it's a burden upon us, but we are with you and we want to fulfill your will. May your word be extended throughout the face of all the earth and to uh, overabund, O Heavenly Father. We express this all to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the honor, glory, and praise be always given to our God. Brothers and sisters, let us now sing choruses to our God. We're going to start by singing chorus number 39, titled, The Lord is Coming Soon. If we pay attention in both the hymns and the choruses, there's a piece, a short instrumental in the beginning and the end where we can close our eyes we can concentrate, brothers and sisters, in this moment, in this time. It's, it's the whole time. It's for God. Let us forget about everything. Let us forget our circumstances, our situations, and let us dedicate this moment to Him. Each second, let us give Him the glory that He deserves. That's why in those instrumental moments, close your eyes and we can praise God. In that way, when we start to sing, your heart is open and set for the Lord. And those melodies will reach before the presence of the Lord. Do you believe it's so, brothers and sisters? Let us sing to our God. Chorus number 39, The Lord is Coming Soon. The Lord is coming soon to 
saved us with his blood oh what a gift of love once given the angels will sound the shout of his coming we'll be Praise and exaltation is for our God. Let us sing yet another beautiful chorus. It's a chorus that rings true to our life, titled, O Lord, You Are My God. Chorus 110. Let us give the glory to our Creator. Let us give Him the honor that He deserves. Lord, You Are My God. How glorious and how marvelous is our God. It has now been a little over three years since we started to have these live streams where the Lord has taught us so much, where he has sustained us, he sustained us throughout the pandemic, and he has perfected us every day through his word with new revelations of his doctrine. But none of this would have been possible without the leadership in the church, without there being a great teacher there to teach us so many marvels and to give us so much strength. That's why it is a great pleasure for me to leave you in the company of our beloved sister, Marie Luisa. May God bless each and every one of you, brothers and sisters. That our Lord, our Almighty God, our Creator, bless you in this day, and may He fill you of His love, and may His mercy cover you all. May God listen to your prayers. May He see you and hear you. That He may listen to your petitions and grant the desires of your heart. But more importantly, that God may help us all 
to follow him until the last days of our lives, to serve him, to do his will, to please him. That is why we must read the Bible. We must read over and over again this book, which brings us so much peace and provides an abundance of joy, of happiness, of peace, and of knowledge. We ought to make an effort to learn of God in order to live experiences with Him and to feel Him in our lives, in our beings, and in our hearts, to feel God within us. Each day we see the blessings from the Lord. Each day we hear of His miracles, wonders. You may be seated, brothers and sisters. I also want to give warm greetings to the brothers and sisters who are here with me. Those newcomers and first-time guests that are here, we welcome you. May God bless you. And as I was saying, each day we see the blessings. We hear the testimonies of how God manifests himself to each human being and blesses them, keeps and protects them of any dangerous or bad situation in the world, in life. God is there, ready to bless. And that is why we ought to always have adequate words in our vocabulary to speak to God and say in our prayers. The Psalms are spiritual songs, prophecies that God expressed through the lips of David, Moses, Jeremiah, and those singers, mu musicians, that would sing in the temple in antiquity. Those that David had designated the singers of Israel. When they started to sing, the Holy Spirit would take over them. And their words were prophetic words, words that have transcended through today and come to life each time that we read them. We also take these words for ourselves. We say them to our Lord and we sing them to God. And he is pleased. God is pleased with this. So we welcome first-time guests, those people that hear the sermon, see the live stream, but never go to the congregation. I invite you so that you may go to one of our locations of the Church of God, Minister of Jesus Christ International, so that you may receive prophecy and God may speak to you. He will speak to the depths of your heart and the intimate details of your life. That is important. I know of many people that only listen to me through the internet, and that is it. But I would like to invite you so that you may gather in one of our locations and hear the voice of the Holy Spirit when God speaks through a man or a woman of God. You are all invited so that you may attend. We all continue to delight in the stories, and we are reading a story, the story of the early church, the church that the Lord Jesus Christ established through the 12 apostles and gave them orders on how they had to work and how they had to do things. He gave them power and authority so that they would begin to speak regarding the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in any city, town, or country. 
the Lord began to manifest himself. And nowadays, we no longer have anything to long for, as God is also manifesting himself to us. Glory be to God. He is manifesting himself. We have seen and continue to see his glory, his manifestation, his spiritual gifts, his wonders, and many more things. Thanks to God for the privilege that he gives us to know his path. So today, I want to continue on with the reading of Acts of the Apostles in English. And if you over there have another Bible, perhaps in French, German, or Spanish, you can also delight in reviewing once again what happened at that time, but also what happens to us today. Thanks be to God. So let us open our Bibles in Acts chapter 4. We will be reading from verse 1 through 37. There are 37 verses, and I hope that time doesn't go too fast and that I am able to read all of this beautiful story here in Acts chapter 4. I will start by reading verse 1 through 11, Acts 4. Let us continue with our reading of the book of Acts and to see what else happened. And it says, Now as they spoke to the people, it was referring to Peter and John. Now as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, poor apostles, they had their enemies always following them, their enemies, the priests, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, those that did not want to believe in the Lord. So it says in verse 2, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Well, for them, it was very painful when they realized that the Lord Jesus Christ had resurrected because they went to the tomb where the Lord was buried, but they did not find him. Their disbelief and rebellion was so great that they were so bold as to make up that someone had stolen the body overnight and had taken it to another place just to make people believe that he had resurrected. So it convinced themselves with that lie that they made up. They believed the speculation and did not believe in the Lord. However, it says here that the characters, the enemies of the Lord, it says in verse 3, and they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. However, many of those who heard the word Many of the people of the town, fortunately those of the town had heard the word, Peter's sermon. They believed, it says. They believed. And the number of the men came to be about 5,000. Glory to God. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, In verse 6, as well as Annas the high priest and Caiaphas, they were the high priest, Annas and Caiaphas, they were the priests of the temple of the Jews. Yes, that of the Jews, as it was in Jerusalem. And it says that all of these great principles, rulers, 
that they gathered together to determine what they were going to do with Peter and John. Peter and John had to be clothed with the power from on high. Peter and John were clothed with God. So just by being there before those principles and these two apparently weak, helpless, and without being able to do anything, only waiting in God, in the trust that they had given to God. They were only waiting on the promises. Those promises that the Lord Jesus Christ preached to them while he was alive, such as that he would not abandon them at any point. He would not forsake them, that God was going to keep them and protect them from harm of the dangers And the Lord Jesus Christ taught them and promised them. So here, Peter and John at this point are by themselves in front of these high-ranking people. Trusting only in the Lord. Waiting on the power of God to protect them. That God would not allow anything bad to happen to them. So as they were trusting in the Lord, let us continue reading to see what happened. And here in verse 7, after verse 6 describes that the priests were there, and it says, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked. So it says that these rulers had put the two apostles in a visible place and asked them, By what power? Or by what name or what authority have you done this? With this which you are doing, you are preaching. And they probably had heard that there had been miracles performed, but to those they paid little importance. To these miracles that the Lord Jesus Christ had done, they gave no importance on it because it did not suit them at any point to say that they had seen miracles carried out, and wonders. All they could dare to ask was, who gave you authority to do this? In verse 8, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, glory to our God. They were not on their own. They were not by themselves. Blessed is the Lord. So Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel. Listen, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well? Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. By him, this man, by him, the Lord Jesus Christ, this man stands here before you whole, because they had taken that man who had been ill. He had been lame, a condition that was evident in his body that no longer allowed him to do anything. And when they see him walk and behave normally as any other person is when they are amazed and they and ask, why did this happen? Asking, who gave them permission to do these things? So the Holy Spirit was speaking through the apostles' mouths, speaking, and that is why they could go before these very well-educated men, very eloquent, But the Holy Spirit was much more eloquent than them. And it says, By the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth is that this man is here before you completely healed. 
This Jesus is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. And that was already prophesied in Psalm 118. Let us read a bit of this psalm where we find the prophecy where God spoke through David's mouth. And that came to pass. Here in Psalm 118, verse 22, and it reads, But I'm going to read starting verse 21, or actually verse 19, which is so beautiful. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them, and I will praise the Lord. This is gate of the Lord, through which the righteous shall enter. Glory to my God. It is the Lord Jesus Christ that is who it refers to. I will praise you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Therein lies the prophecy. It says, this was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the Lord's doing. That stone which was rejected by the builders has become the chief cornerstone. But what does it mean, the builders? And here it speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he was that stone. And it says, that the builders rejected it. Who rejected it? The priests, the scribes, the Pharisees, and rulers of the people of Israel and of Judah. They were the builders. They were the ones in charge of ministering before God, the law, the law of God, or the law of Moses, as the Bible mentions it. It says the law of Moses, but we know it is the law of God. But since God gave it to Moses to be able to teach the people, it remained the law of Moses. And the priests and the Pharisees, all of the characters that were in charge of teaching those laws and reading them to the people and the priests were the ministers. So they were the builders. Those that were building specifically at that town, building a people so that the people would praise God and please him by fulfilling many commandments. They were the ones in charge. They were the builders. And it seems contradictory that these builders that made an effort supposedly so many years, perhaps thousands of years, they struggled to teach the law they tried to teach the people and punish the people because they were breaking the law. So they were the ones in charge of carrying out justice, supposedly. That justice, which was never carried out thoroughly with honesty, But they were those builders. They were the rulers. They were the principals. They were the ministers. And no one was going to take away that title from them. And that is why they took advantage and abused of that title that they had. And that is why we now go back to Acts chapter 4 when it says, that this Jesus 
is the chief cornerstone that Psalm 118 speaks of. It says, rejected by you, speaking to the priests and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the rulers to all of them. That is what it is saying. This Jesus is the chief cornerstone that you all, the builders, have belittled, have rejected. But it turns out that this stone came and turned into the chief cornerstone, meaning the main stone, the main foundation that holds up a building, a construction. It is the main element that holds it up and it turned into that main foundation that holds up a building. Something great, a large construction. So this rejected stone, them being filled with the Holy Spirit, they bring to these people the bad works, the bad behaviors, the bad way of doing things, the way that they handled the Lord Jesus being on earth as a human. However, let us see what happened. And it says here on verse 12, it says, nor is there salvation in any other. Nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There is no other name. I would like so much for you all to read this verse so that you may memorize it and have it in the depths of your hearts. Let us read it. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Glory to our God. There is only one path, only one door. That door of the psalm that we just read, that is the entrance, only one door the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And it says that he is the only way and is the only thing that God gave humanity, the only name given man under heaven. It says the Lord Jesus Christ in whom humanity could be saved. So, I invite the people to some that think that it is not this way and do not accept. I invite you to change your mind. Change your mind. And if you have had a religion whose door or path is not the Lord Jesus Christ, but another path, then you ought to change your mind and follow this path. And you will see how everything will be okay. Everything will be better. You will have an encounter with God. But you have to be sincere. Because if there is no sincerity in your heart, there is no willingness and desire to find the true path, the true door, if there is no desire to truly want to encounter God, then God is never going to fulfill your thoughts. Everything will be that, just a thought. But if your thoughts are steadfast and it all comes from the heart, God will surely help you and you will one day have an encounter with God because he will reveal to you and will guide you on the right path. 
We ought to remove from us selfishness, arrogance, that ego, believing that we are the best, the most intelligent, that we know a lot, that we do not have to humiliate ourselves to others' opinions. No, all of that is arrogance, pride, vanity. And if we truly want good for our lives, then let us be humble and let us accept that there is a path, a door. And that path is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So you pray and plead to the Lord saying, God, if you exist, then show me the path. I want to have an experience with you. Convince me because I want to seek what is righteous and I want to do what is upright and I want to please God and I want to do good that is it with sincerity with humility and with meekness but not with arrogance nor should we boast about who we are what we have or what others say we are no because this is not pleasing before God and here the apostles continued filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to the characters. And in verse 13, it says, Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, let's say that these people were amazed to hear them speak, for they were not well-educated people. They were fishermen, They were not concerned with studying how to read or write. At that time, it was scarce for people to learn how to read or write. So they were not worried about this, and their lives were dedicated to fishing. But these other characters, since they were well-educated men, they were amazed by Peter and John's boldness. It says, and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, meaning common people, common men, regular people like any other. They were marveled, it says, and they realized they had been with Jesus. They said, yes, truly these men were with Jesus because what they are saying are things that Jesus preached. Okay, verse 14. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. They were seeing the proof, the proof of the miracle, the wonder that God had performed in that man. And they could say nothing as they saw the proof right there. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, They conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name. It did not suit them to continue preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 18, So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people. These rulers, they knew that the people were with the disciples because the people themselves were the ones that were receiving a benefit. They were the ones receiving the healings, the miracles, all of the evidence of the truth or Jesus Christ that was being evidenced by the people. 
And that is why they were with the disciples and these characters were afraid. They feared that the people would go against them. So it says, Since they all glorified God for what had been done for the miracles, thanks to our God, for, for these things that the Lord did in that time when he manifested himself in such a marvelous way and amongst the perils, God was there keeping and protecting his disciples from harm until the appointed day. And 22 says, For the man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing has been performed. So they could not say that it was a lie, that they had deceived him to say this. It was because of the age they believed him that God had performed this miracle. In verse 23, And being let go, well, they were let go. They went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God. You made heaven and earth. You can see that all of these words are useful to us as well today. For when we pray and plead to the Lord, it says, you are the one who made heaven and earth the sea, and all that is in them. Who by the mouth of your servant David have said, Why did the nations rage? Why? And the people plot vain things. Why? And it says in verse 26, The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. This we find in Psalm number 2. And why don't we read Psalm 2, brothers and sisters, so that you can notice that they are the fulfilled prophecies and additionally the promises of our God of everything he prophesied in antiquity on how it became evident after the Lord Jesus Christ. All of the prophecies of Moses and the prophets came to pass in psalms as psalms are also prophecies here in psalm number two we find that they are saying to the people of that time and are saying here in the psalm saying today is the fulfillment of these things so in psalm 2 verse 1 are we there in the reading why do the nations rage and the people plot vain things the king of the earth set themselves and the rulers, and who were there at that time? There were the priests, the elders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the rulers. They were the kings, the rulers, the principles of the people. So it says, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed glory to God, saying, let us break destroy, disappear. That's it. Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their courts from us. So they wanted to get rid of the Lord. And that is why they were forbidding the apostles, Peter and John, to not speak, not teach or preach anymore about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They were threatened. And here in this psalm, number two, God had already spoken about this. But look at the promise that God makes to Peter and John here in Psalm 2, verse 4. He who sits in the heavens, meaning our God, shall laugh. He shall laugh at those priests, those rulers, Pharisees, Sadducees, the elders. The Lord shall laugh, and the Lord shall hold them in derision. So it happened. So it happened because God is power. It is the hand of God, the creator, the almighty God, the one who created the universe, who could go against him. So the Lord was speaking here about punishment for these people, punishment for he says, then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. He says, he will distress them. Yet I have set my king, O my holy hill of Zion. 
That is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth over Zion. And it says here in verse 7, I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. When he says begotten, it refers to the human nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what God begot by the Holy Spirit in Mary's womb. He says, I have begotten you today. Ask of me and I will give you the nations of, for your inheritance. And you shall break them with the rod of iron and you will dash them to pieces. And look here in verse 12, it says, Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the path that you are taking. So he says, believe in him, trust in him, and do not doubt. That is why I invite those because there are many religions that cast aside the Lord Jesus Christ as the son of God, as God, as the king, as the savior. Some have him as a common man who simply appeared and that is it. No, he is the way and he is the door. Let us go back to Acts here where we were in verse 26. The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. They were there speaking to God, praying and reflecting on God. And it says in verse 29, Now the Lord, look on their, on their hearts and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word with deliverance, with ease, without fear, without hiding anything, that they may speak your word, Lord. May they speak of that king that is highlighted in Psalm 2. Fear the king, lest he be angry and you perish in your ways. Apparently, they think that they are walking towards eternal life. But they could make a mistake and go astray if they cause him. That if they cause that king to anger, we ought to honor him. We ought to praise him. That is all that Psalm number two invites us to do. And they, in their prayers as well, speak to God. And in verse 30, they say to the Lord as well, by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And that happened at that time. And there are people who say, that stayed in the past. The Bible is old-fashioned. It is obsolete. That is what God did in that time, not today. He no longer exists. He died. That is what people say. And people say that God does not perform miracles, signs. But unfortunately, there exists a group of people, not too small, who have the miracles, signs, the manifestation of God of heavens. The God that created the heavens and the earth, the universe, they have seen the miracles through a door, a path that God left, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We have seen God's hand. We have heard his promises when he speaks to us, when he speaks through prophecy. And the Holy Spirit makes promises of blessings, of healings, of abundance, of protection that keeps us, that teaches us, that guides us, that gives us peace, joy, happiness. And we see how all of this is fulfilled in our lives. How could we doubt that there is a God? How could we doubt that God exists? gave Jesus Christ of Nazareth as that path toward eternal life. We cannot doubt. And we cannot say 
that this is forgotten and left behind in history because today there are also hundreds or perhaps thousands of people who have benefited of the power of God, his powerful hand, his promises. And in the name of Jesus Christ, many marvels have been done. Wonders and signs. And we are living them. In these past days, there was something like a miracle, we say, in a place, in a small town. There was a a small town, a fire. And the location of our church, the building, whatever you want to call it, was next to the house that was up in flames. And the most feasible thing to happen was for our church building to go up in flames as well. That place where people gather. You'll see it or maybe have already seen it as it came out on the internet. And I believe you will watch it in your church locations. So any day you may see it or perhaps on a Sunday where you will see that beautiful testimony and you will see how God is so righteous and so merciful and takes care of his own, those who follow him. So glory to our King, glory to our God, glory to the one who created the universe. The glory is for him, the honor. Here the apostles say, stretch out your hands to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of Jesus. Glory to God as today we are living this as well. So our Lord remains valid. Today he continues to be valid. He exists. He lives and he reigns. He teaches us and guides us. And it says here in verse 31, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. Glory to our God. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Blessed be the Lord. We see how the Lord here allowed all of them to be filled with the Holy Spirit as they were people who barely started to hear the word. And we're there giving the explanations to those main rulers. However, the rest of the people who heard them believed and God baptized them with the Holy Spirit. He filled them with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak and to prophesy. Because that is the proof, the evidence of having received the Holy Spirit to speak with other tongues, different from those that we speak speak in our own native languages, to speak and also the prophecy that was uttered, that if it is involuntary, that that prophecy is uttered because it is the Lord using our mouths to speak. So it happened that day and it happens today as well because God is the same yesterday and today and for eternity. He is the same. Glory to the Lord. Now the multitude of those, in verse 32, the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say any of these things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. It says that they would sell their possessions, their houses, and they brought it all to the apostles and would distribute among all so there would be no one lacking there. And they would give it all to the apostles. And they all ate happily, living with God. 
for the first time in their lives, those people experienced what it meant to live with God, to be amongst the presence of God, or better yet, God was among them. Glory to the King. So imagine what was the joy like? that happiness that these people felt to enjoy the spiritual and powerful being. Incredible. They must have said incredible that a man who we saw, a man of flesh and bones, that we saw him walk, saw him being taken to the cross of Calvary, and we saw him bleed when they crowned him with thorns, And we saw him. It is incredible that it was God within him. And now we see how he himself is manifesting in our lives. And we feel him because he allows us to speak in another language. And allows us to speak of things that we had never reflected on, learned, or memorized. We feel his presence and we see his miracles. All of this are things they could have said at that time. They thought about all of this. They reflected on this to think about that man. Look now, is God our God? Incredible for them. They must have said incredible, impossible. But it is the truth and that is what we are living and feeling and seeing. And here... We are in verse number 36. And Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. But no one was forcing him to do these things. Who forced them? No one. Only God. The Holy Spirit. He was the only one that could touch the heart of people or of a person to make them feel that he had enough. That they had abundance and that they ought to share with those that are needy with others because the love of God has entered their heart the love of God and when in our hearts we have that love and mercy of God we no longer are those selfish, ambitious, greedy person, but instead we want to give so that others have and can enjoy. That is it. So what a beautiful and complete work that our Lord, that aside from doing these miracles and wonders, he also performed The miracle of removing ambitions from people. The greed that all the wealthy would begin to sell their possessions to help those in need. Glory to our God. Imagine how beautiful that must have been at that time. But today as well, we live these experiences. Today in a different way because of the laws in different countries We have to submit to those rules and laws. But thanks to God, today we can also help others. Today as well, through foundations and nonprofit organizations. Not sure how to say that exactly, but these foundations or nonprofit organizations are there they are there to help people that is what we do and 
glory to God, that is our joy. And I give thanks to God also to our donors. The foundation we have, the Maria Luisa Foundation, has many donors who trust us and give us, let's say, thousands of dollars to have events and help a specific group of people to build schools, help with medical, with sight, ear, nose, throat doctors, well, all the necessary things. Even kids, they go and receive a gift or a toy or school kits. And the joy we see in these people shakes us to our core. And we become so joyful. So when I read here that these people started to sell their possessions to, to distribute to the needy, I know what this is. I know what they felt. They felt joy at seeing others being happy. Those who had never enjoyed of a food or a trip, perhaps a happy moment because they were lacking of these basic things. And here God did this. What would they have felt? Well, we know what they felt because I also feel it when we work in the Maria Lisa Foundation. And when we see people smile, when we see people, once we had an event with people in wheelchairs, with all of those in wheelchairs who had cancer, they all had cancer. And we had that event and we had to bring people, not just those of the church, but people from outside, people who had not converted. They are not of the church. We had all of these people gathered there, but God placed in my heart to greet them all because God wanted to benefit them. They had cancer and they went one by one greeting them without looking at whether they were of the church or not. I greeted them and hugged them each one, and God did many miracles and healed many of cancer. So here, when this lame man, who was lame from birth, saw Peter and asked for alms, which we read there in the temple, the beautiful, Peter said, when, when we read in the previous teaching, Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. What was it that he had of God? The power of God, the spiritual gift. He had the gift of healing, among others, and said, I do not have silver or gold, but what I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That is it, brothers and sisters. That is it. It is not something I am making up. Now, I am not saying that it is only for me that God will use me. He will use many. Throughout all of the church locations, he has given many all of the spiritual gifts, just like me. They have given all the gifts as well, just that you do not have access to know them all. That is why I invite you to go to the church, gather, so that you may receive laid on on hand, so that God can manifest himself there. Not only are you going to be healed, but also he's going to bless you and give you peace and happiness as well. So that is what God gives us. That is what, that is why we are happy. And I applaud that they gave and sold their possessions and distributed to the needy because that is what we see. Many people ask me, sister, how can we fulfill the word of God when he says that we have to help those in need? In what way? Look, this is the way through the nonprofit organizations because we cannot do it any other way. The church cannot go and help people because it is forbidden by the laws. There are rules with the church and we have to follow them. But through nonprofits, we can help people. We can help many. So my dear brothers and sisters, first time guests and newcomers, I also invite you to go to the website of our church and the website of the Marilisa Foundation, 
that it is also very beautiful for you to see all that God has done by using us all, the whole church, the believers, so that all can see that we are fulfilling a duty and that this word that we just read today is not forgotten, is not old-fashioned, because today we live it as well. May the glory and honor be to our God. Let us pray. Holy Father, thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your blessings. Thank you, Eternal God, for your promises, because we enjoy of them. We enjoy of the fulfillment of your word. Thank you, Lord, because we delight when the Holy Spirit manifests himself in our lives and you perform miracles and signs. We rejoice and we are filled with happiness. And now I ask that you may stretch out your hand over all those who are ill, those who have all kinds of illnesses. Lord, the children, the elderly, people of all ages, they suffer illnesses, deliver, heal them, and remove all evil and unclean spirits, the witchcraft, the sorcery, the curses from many. Remove them from children and the elderly and people of all ages because many spirits of illnesses come to tie them down. But you are powerful and you are going to deliver them. Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, we praise you. We give you the honor and the glory. Thank you, my Heavenly Father. Él hizo tanto para mí Jamás podré contarles la mitad De las cosas que el Señor ha hecho para mí Él hizo tanto para mí Él hizo tanto para mí Jamás podré Contarles la mitad de las cosas que el Señor ha hecho para mí. Él hizo tanto para mí. Él hizo tanto para mí. Jamás podré contarles la mitad. De las cosas que el Señor ha hecho para mí. Glory to our God. Thanks be to our Lord. May God bless you all. Kisses to all the children. And I embrace you all there. And the brothers and sisters here. May God bless you. Thank you. And until next time. May God bless you.